<sighs> Another beautiful day. Perfect weather to get a bit of training in. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. Hey, Annette. Not used to seeing anyone else up and about this early. What's up? Oh, this is awful. Just the worst. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with me, does it? It absolutely does. You sang my song in front of the other mercenaries. Your song? Oh, you mean the one about the horse that had a human face? No! I mean, yes, but that's not what it's about at all. Really? I could have sworn the lyrics said something about the guy's body being 80% horse. I liked it so much I couldn't stop humming it to myself, and then I had to teach it to the other mercs when they overheard me. Which explains why I heard it in all corners of the camp. It really caught me off guard. I haven't sung it for anyone else yet. Only you. Sorry. Should I have kept it to myself? I thought it was a great little tune, honest. I'm glad you liked it that much, but I hadn't even finished writing the lyrics yet. I don't mind my songs getting around once I'm happy with how they turned out. But it's super embarrassing when people hear one before I've finished writing it. Okay, yeah, that's fair. It's no fun when people see or hear something when you're not ready to show it off. I mean, I'm the same way. I can't stand it when other people watch me practice my sword work. Though, I can't really avoid it if I want to get any real training in. Exactly. But my song's out in the wild now, and there's no putting that cat back in the box. I guess I'll just have to wait till everyone forgets it. Hey, uh, I'm really sorry about all this. I could tell everyone to pretend like they never heard it, if you think that would help. No, absolutely not. That'll just make them all suspicious. In that case, why don't you just finish the song? Then you can sing the final version for everyone, and they'll forget about the old one in no time. You might not be happy with it right now, but it's clearly catchy if all those people are loving it. Hmm, you have a point there. I guess I just need to finish up the lyrics then. That's the spirit, though I do really like the whole 80% horse part. Hey, what are the words to that song again? Something about an eagle and a lion flying through the sky? A flying lion? I'm pretty sure I know the song you're talking about, but those definitely ain't the lyrics I've heard. The one I know is about some horse with a human face running through the greenest grass you ever did see. Hmm, now that you mention it, that does sound familiar. What a weird thing to sing about. I wonder who wrote it. Uh, yeah, this isn't working. You can say that again. I finally finished rewriting the lyrics and everything, but they aren't catching on. Not at all. I've even heard people theorizing that the horse with the human face is some kind of grand metaphor. You know, since he's a mix of human wisdom and a horse's pure strength, the song is saying that the brave warrior who possesses both will win in the end. Or that the horse is some kind of messenger sent by the goddess to punish sinners. <sighs> Why did it come to this? I didn't have any of that stuff in mind when I was writing it. I just wanted to sing about a knight rushing through an open field. And then I snuck in a tiny bit of Dusker mythology that Dadu told me about. Not sure how you got from that to a song about a horse with a human face. I already told you, that's not what it is! It's a mythological warrior being from Dusker legend. Alright, alright. 
Either way, everyone obviously prefers the original version. So, all's well that ends well, right? They say once people hear a song, it's out of the composer's hands forever. The author is dead, all that stuff. I know you're just saying all this to make me feel better. Well, yeah, I can't deny that. Sorry, Annette. But it's true that there's nothing you can really do now. Even if you write totally new lyrics and sing them for the whole army, there's no guarantee they'll get as big as the ones that are already out there. You have a point, but still... Listen, Annette. Songs have a lot of power. They help people in need, give them courage when they're down on their luck. And if you ask me, I think yours could inspire our troops out on the battlefield, too. I don't know... Hey, what even is a human-faced horse anyway? Is it some kind of monster? Ain't no monster I've ever heard of. Maybe it's a horrible beast that comes crawling up out of the bowels of the earth. Don't say stuff like that. You're gonna ruin a perfectly happy song. Aww. <laughs> Hey, Annette. What are you up so late for? Some kind of research? Oh, no. It's nothing like that. I've been working on this. Uh, that just looks like a bunch of little black bugs jumping around on a page. Excuse you? It's sheet music! I have no idea how you could possibly think the notes look like bugs. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just... I don't think I've ever actually seen sheet music before. Does this mean you're writing a new song? Mm-hmm. A lovely tune popped into my head today, so I wanted to jot it down before I forgot. Mind singing it for me? I'd love to know what kind of song it is. Nope, sorry. I'm not done writing the lyrics yet. I have a rough outline, but that's about it so far. Still... I want to write something happy. A song that'll make people feel good when they sing it. That sounds great. I can't wait till it's finished. Hey, uh, do you remember the song I wrote about that night? Night? Oh, you mean the horse with the human... Uh, mm, uh, yep, yeah, the song about the night, of course. Well, I heard someone singing it again. Look, Annette, I know you're upset I let it slip, but what's done is done. I didn't mean it like that. I... I heard a mercenary singing it to himself as he died. He was covered in blood and could hardly breathe. Yet he had this great big smile on his face as the words crossed his lips. He must have been in so much pain. But still, he just kept smiling. Probably thinking back to all the times he'd spent drinking and singing with his friends. Soldiers always throw the wildest parties after a battle. The sort of thing where you can find knights and mercs alike, locking arms and belting out tunes. Maybe. Anyway, I've been thinking about that mercenary a lot ever since he passed. I never wanted that song out in the world, and I'm honestly still not happy about it but it helped him face his final moments with a smile, instead of sadness or fear. And I'm forever grateful I could provide that. It's like I told you before, Annette. Your songs can really help people. I'm sure tons more took comfort in that song, too. Including me. Whenever I'm feeling down, I just think about one of your silly songs and I'm right back in high spirits. Silly? Are you implying my lyrics aren't serious? No, never mind. I'll choose to take it as a compliment. And hey, if my songs really help people that much, I better get to work writing lots of new ones. There you go. So what's this next one gonna be about? 
Well, right now I'm planning to make it be about a group of friends who dig into a huge feast together. They keep churning out dish after delicious dish, and everyone's faces are alight with laughter and joy. Wow, I'm getting hungry just hearing about it. Right? Then once all the food runs out, they go off hunting for ingredients so they can cook up some more. Uh, okay. But, uh-oh! They come across a ginormous bear and have to battle it to the death! A death match with a bear? I thought this was supposed to be a happy song about a feast. I uh, guess I shouldn't judge it before it's done. Just let me know when you're finished, okay? I want to be the first in line to hear it. Yes, of course. Another beautiful day. Perfect weather to get a bit of training in. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. Hey, Annette. Not used to seeing anyone else up and about this early. What's up? Oh, this is awful. Just the worst. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with me, does it? It absolutely does. You sang my song in front of the other mercenaries! Your... song? Oh, you mean the one about the horse that had a human face? No! I mean, yes, but that's not what it's about at all. Really? I could have sworn the lyric said something about the guy's body being 80% horse. I liked it so much I couldn't stop humming it to myself. And then I had to teach it to the other mercs when they overheard me. Which explains why I heard it in all corners of the camp. It really caught me off guard. I haven't sung it for anyone else yet. Only you. Sorry, should I have kept it to myself? I thought it was a great little tune, honest. I'm glad you liked it that much, but I hadn't even finished writing the lyrics yet. I don't mind my songs getting around once I'm happy with how they turned out. But it's super embarrassing when people hear one before I've finished writing it. Come on, is it really so bad to show something off while it's still in progress? Everything's gotta start somewhere. And besides, the earlier you let people listen to your songs, the sooner you can get their feedback and incorporate it. Maybe, but I still feel weird about it. <sighs> Either way, my song's out in the wild now, and there's no putting that cat back in the box. I guess I'll just have to wait till everyone forgets it. Hey, uh, I'm really sorry about all this. I could tell everyone to pretend like they never heard it, if you think that would help. No, absolutely not! That'll just make them all suspicious! In that case, why don't you just finish the song? Then you can sing the final version for everyone, and they'll forget about the old one in no time. You might not be happy with it right now, but it's clearly catchy if all those people are loving it. Hmm, you have a point there. I guess I just need to finish up the lyrics then. <laughs> That's the spirit. Though I do really like the whole 80% horse part. Hey, what are the words to that song again? Something about an eagle and a lion flying through the sky? A flying lion? I'm pretty sure I know the song you're talking about, but those definitely ain't the lyrics I've heard. The one I know is about some horse with a human face running through the greenest grass you ever did see. Hmm, now that you mention it, that does sound familiar. 
What a weird thing to sing about. I wonder who wrote it. Uh, yeah, this isn't working. You can say that again. I finally finished rewriting the lyrics and everything, but they aren't catching on. Not at all. I've even heard people theorizing that the horse with a human face is some kind of grand metaphor. You know, since he's a mix of human wisdom and a horse's pure strength, the song is saying that the brave warrior who possesses both will win in the end. Or that the horse is some kind of messenger sent by the goddess to punish sinners. <sighs> Why did it come to this? I didn't have any of that stuff in mind when I was writing it. I just wanted to sing about a knight rushing through an open field. And then I snuck in a tiny bit of Dusker mythology that Dadu told me about. Not sure how you got from that to a song about a horse with a human face. I already told you, that's not what it is! It's a mythological warrior being from Dusker legend. Alright, alright. Either way, everyone obviously prefers the original version. So, all's well that ends well, right? They say once people hear a song, it's out of the composer's hands forever. The author is dead, all that stuff. I know you're just saying all this to make me feel better. It's not just to make you feel better, though. I really believe it. I'm sure all great artists across the centuries have dealt with this exact problem at one point or another. I don't care about the troubles of people from the distant past. It's happening to me, right now. And there's nothing I can do about it. Listen, Annette. Songs have a lot of power. They help people in need, give them courage when they're down on their luck. And if you ask me, I think yours could inspire our troops out on the battlefield, too. I don't know. Hey, what even is a human-faced horse anyway? Is it some kind of monster? Ain't no monster I've ever heard of. Maybe it's a horrible beast that comes crawling up out of the bowels of the earth. Don't say stuff like that. You're gonna ruin a perfectly happy song. Aww. <laughs> Hey, Annette. What are you up so late for? Some kind of research? Oh no, it's nothing like that. I've been working on this. Uh, that just looks like a bunch of little black bugs jumping around on a page. Excuse you? It's sheet music! I have no idea how you could possibly think the notes look like bugs. Sorry, sorry. It's just, I don't think I've ever actually seen sheet music before. Does this mean you're writing a new song? Mm-hmm. A lovely tune popped into my head today, so I wanted to jot it down before I forgot. What kind of song is it? I can't read sheet music, so I'm having trouble imagining what it'll be like. If it turns out right, it'll be bouncy and fun. Though, I'm nowhere near finishing the lyrics yet. Still, I want to write something happy. A song that'll make people feel good when they sing it. That sounds great. I can't wait till it's finished. Hey, uh, do you remember the song I wrote about that night? Night? Oh, you mean the horse with the human... <clears throat> yeah, the song about the night, of course. Well, I heard someone singing it again. Look, Annette, I know you're upset I let it slip, but what's done is done. I didn't mean it like that. I... I heard a mercenary singing it to himself as he died. He was covered in blood and could hardly breathe. Yet he had this great big smile on his face as the words crossed his lips. He 
must have been in so much pain. But still, he just kept smiling. Probably thinking back to all the times he spent drinking and singing with his friends. Soldiers always throw the wildest parties after a battle. The sort of thing where you can find knights and mercs alike locking arms and belting out tunes. Maybe. Anyway, I've been thinking about that mercenary a lot ever since he passed. I never wanted that song out in the world, and I'm honestly still not happy about it. But it helped him face his final moments with a smile, instead of sadness or fear. And I'm forever grateful I could provide that. It's like I told you before, Annette. Your songs can really help people. I'm sure tons more took comfort in that song, too. Including me. Whenever I'm feeling down, I just think about one of your silly songs, and I'm right back in high spirits. Silly? Are you implying my lyrics aren't serious? No, never mind. I'll choose to take it as a compliment. And hey, if my songs really help people that much, I better get to work writing lots of new ones. There you go. So, what's this next one gonna be about? Well, right now I'm planning to make it be about a group of friends who dig into a huge feast together. They keep churning out dish after delicious dish, and everyone's faces are alight with laughter and joy. Wow. I'm getting hungry just hearing about it. Right? Then once all the food runs out, they go off hunting for ingredients so they can cook up some more. Uh, okay. But uh-oh, they come across a ginormous bear and have to battle it to the death. A death match with a bear? I thought this was supposed to be a happy song about a feast. Eh, I guess I shouldn't judge it before it's done. Just let me know when you're finished, okay? I want to be the first in line to hear it. Yes, of course. Ah! No, Annette! Get back! Oh, that was a close one. Good thing we had water nearby. Oh, my apologies. It was foolish for me to attempt that without prior experience. No, it was my fault for asking you to try and light it with magic. The fault is mine alone. You had no way of knowing that my aptitude for magic was so lacking. When we were lucky it only resulted in a small explosion. Had the flames spread, it easily may have proved disastrous. Aw, don't beat yourself up over it. We were able to put it out quickly, and that's all that matters. What a remarkably positive spin on the matter. Still, I'm relieved you weren't hurt. I have always been abysmal at magic. My father and grandfather were the same, so... Perhaps I inherited it from them. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're better suited to fighting with something sharp and pointy. Actually, I had a fair amount of interest in becoming a mage when I was a boy. An old friend of mine would give magic demonstrations, and I always found myself terribly jealous of her abilities. Well, you know there's a school of sorcery in the capital, right? You definitely should have enrolled. Ah, but I knew they only accepted students who display at least a modicum of talent for the craft. Every time I glimpsed one of those students, I found myself envious of their skill. I had no idea. But hey, if you're interested, how about I teach you a bit? We can start right now. You would do that? Sure. See, I've been helping out at the school ever since I came back to the capital. And after talking with everyone there, I've been thinking it would be fun to, you know, teach somebody. I'd like to help people get better at magic, even if they're really, really, really bad at it. A fine aspiration. If you'll have me, I would be honored to be your first pupil. 
Though, I imagine your skills can be put to use helping many people besides just myself. I know I am not the first person, nor will I be the last, to accidentally conjure up an explosion. Come on, Dimitri. It's not like I'll be that much help. But regardless, I'm confident that becoming a teacher is the path for me. Right then, Your Majesty. Let's start by practicing some fire magic. You want me to cast the same spell again? Well, if you think it best... Fire spells are the most basic magic of all. You just let the old power build up, and then boom, let loose! Okay, so start by using your hands to focus your energy. Like this? Don't be so hesitant. We've got plenty of water here, so really lean into it. I wasn't intending to hold back. Perhaps I could charge it up a bit more. I fear we may have a long road ahead of us. Oh, how do I even... Annette, what are you doing? Oh, to do. Perfect timing. Got a sec? So, here's my problem. I'm not entirely sure how to use this thing. That is a hero's relic, yes? Yep, it's called Crusher. I know, pretty intimidating. It used to belong to my uncle. But it's really, really heavy. Just lugging it around tires me out like nothing else. Plus, whenever I swing the thing, I feel like it's gonna take me right along with it. It does look heavy, yes. Even without its power as a relic, no armor could possibly stand against such weight. Sounds like I need to build up some muscle then. That's probably gonna take a while, huh? Too bad I'm not already as big and tall as you. You might not be able to change your stature, but physique isn't everything. You know, I think I've heard my father say the same thing. And if that's the case, I'd like to try a few things. Have time to help? Very well. Thanks. Though, on second thought, I probably shouldn't go around swinging a relic at you. I often do my training with a large bag of rocks. That could work. Use your entire body, Annette. If you only use your arms, you'll be sent spinning. Okay, like this? Exactly. Whew, what a workout. Still, I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. Thanks, Dudu. You're a lifesaver. Glad to be of service. I wasn't sure I'd ever be able to wield something like a hero's relic. But you gave me the motivation to try. I'm gonna use this puppy to keep everyone safe. Just you watch. Yes, I... I'm sure you will. Huh? Did you? What are you doing here? Oh, Annette. I was training wow do you ever take a break because you should it's almost dinner time i don't plan to stop yet i'm still not strong enough not strong you mean with your axe come on you're plenty good at swinging that guy around no i must make up for my inability to wield a hero's relic you Felix and the others are all able to make use of their immense power. I know I can never rise to that level, but if I could somehow close the gap...
be honest, I'm envious. Envious of your ability to wield such a powerful instrument. Oh, I don't think I've ever heard you open up like that before. I apologize. Please forget I said anything. No, I'm happy you told me. I feel closer to you now. Anyway, I think you're really strong already. I don't know what we'd do without you. Truly? Yeah. You're invaluable with or without a relic. Crests and relics are only useful on the battlefield anyway. But you? You can cook and sew and do all kinds of helpful stuff. Meanwhile, I'm pretty much just nine thumbs and a toe. Plus, you swing around that heavy axe like it's nothing. So I mean it to do. You're amazing. We each have something the other lacks. Exactly. Besides, maybe it's a good thing that you can't use a relic. If you could, you'd be too good and the rest of us would just be getting in your way all the time. Training is fine and dandy, but don't be so hard on yourself, okay? You're strong in your own way, Annette. Your optimism is infectious. It aids not only me, but everyone else as well. Aw, you're making me blush. Still, I guess being positive sort of is one of my special talents, huh? And if it managed to help you even a little, that's enough for me. Anyway, I made dinner today, so let's head back and start feasting. It'll be yummy, promise. I mean, I did manage to make the bottom of the pot fall out, so things got a little hairy there for a second, but it smells great. The bottom... fell out? Yeah, but it turned out amazing, I swear. I can't wait for you to try some. How did you manage to... Never mind. Let's eat before it grows cold. Annette, how does that song about the dancing swamp beasties end? It wasn't swamp beasties, it was bears. A song about dancing swamp beasties wouldn't be nearly as cute. It was supposed to be cute? Anyway, I'd never heard a song like that before, and now I can't get it out of my head. Wait, really? Wow, I'm flattered. But it's not like I can make up the rest of it on the spot. Why don't you go see an opera or something? Get a better song stuck up in there. Yeah, I don't know. Guess I've been interested in seeing an opera in the past, but I've never gone. Hmm. Now that you mention it, I don't know if they even perform opera in Fargus. But the church is in Camulus now, and they have volunteers who put on operas every now and then. I've been helping Dorothea and the others there, and it's really expanded my repertoire of songs. Well then, sing one for me. Just belt out whatever pops into your head. You got it. I'll sing you my favorite. Me, me, me. A shimmering life burns down to ash. Uh, then since I'm all hot and sweaty, I hop in the bath. Soon I get real dizzy, which puts me in a tizzy. But eventually I feel way, 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 way better. So I decide to hop back in the bath again. Whew. Huh. You take baths when you're already hot? That's some impressive fortitude. I think I underestimated you. Oh. Wait, but then you get back in the bath even though it made you dizzy. You must seriously love bathing. Uh... Well, this has been fascinating. I had no idea operas could have such unexpected developments. Operas aren't like that at all! That's just an aria I learned a long time ago, and I don't even really remember the words. It wasn't supposed to be a song about taking a bath. It was supposed to be serious. Wait, really? That's much less interesting. 
No, you don't... Look, a real opera is much better, all right? I'll take you to one sometime, and you'll see. It'll take your breath away when you hear it. I bet you'll fall head over heels in love. Uh, fine. But let's save it until the war is over. If it's really that good, I want to make sure I give it my full attention. Then we're definitely going to see an opera. It's a promise. <sighs> what lovely weather. Morning walks really are the best. Hmm? Is that Ash? I thought it was you. What are you doing out and about so early? Morning, Annette. I've been teaching some of the townspeople how to read and write, as well as some basic math skills. We were all so into it, we didn't notice the time slipping away, and now... Uh, it's suddenly morning. Wow, that's so good of you, Ash. What made you decide to do that? When I went into town earlier, I found a merchant selling medicine at outrageous prices. But people were all snapping it up without even questioning it. Well, I couldn't just stand by and watch it happen. So I called a couple folks over to show them the math. A few more people came over, then a few more. And before I knew it, I found myself becoming their teacher. <laughs> that is so you. But seriously, I think it's amazing. If you ever decide to break out the chalk again, I'd love to help. You can handle reading and math and stuff, and I'll teach him magic and history. Really? That would be great! I enjoy studying a lot, but I don't think I'm very good at actually instructing people. Well, they are two completely different things. Speaking of which, didn't Lord Lenato teach you your letters and numbers? Yes, although my father showed me some basic arithmetic as well. Lenato always used to say that study is the path to one's own morality. What does that mean? Well, there's no universal rules for what's right and what's wrong, you know? So you have to find your own morality, something you can believe in and stick to, no matter what. He also said a person needs knowledge and education to make that happen. Hmm, I suppose knowledge does grant the power to make sound judgments. I mean, I saw everything differently once I started attending the School of Sorcery and the Officer's Academy. Most of the people here lack the means to attend such institutions, but they still contend with danger and lies on a daily basis. I want to give them the tools to see their way clear of that. So, I guess that's why I'm teaching them. I want to meet them as an equal, not as a Knight of Farkas, but as someone who knows exactly what they're going through. That's incredible, Ash. I think I could learn a thing or two from you, too. Hey, Ash! Listen to this! What's got you so excited, Annette? Remember Odette, the flower peddler we taught how to read and write? Well, apparently, the School of Sorcery thought she had talent, and they accepted her as a student. Wow, that's impressive. The School of Sorcery isn't easy to get into. Right? I'm so glad we took the time to teach everyone. It's strange to think that someone I helped is going to study under those teachers. Strange, but also great. Speaking of the teachers, there's something I need to tell you. I had another reason for wanting to help you instruct the villagers. Oh? What's that? When I was younger, I wanted to be a teacher at the School of Sorcery. It didn't even have to be that school necessarily. I just wanted to make a living as an instructor somewhere. 
And when I started teaching some of the townspeople here with you, it was so much fun. <laughs> you did seem to be enjoying yourself. I know, right? My favorite part was when someone would have that aha moment and their face would just light up. It really made all the time I'd spent studying feel worth it. You're a great teacher, Annette. I think it's your calling, honestly. I've never seen anyone so patient with people when they're struggling to understand. If you ask me, you should become a full-fledged professor. I'd love to study under an instructor like you. Oh gosh, you're making me blush. But if you really think that, then I'm gonna go for it. But that means I need to hit the books. Oh, and probably chat with some of the teachers at the School of Sorcery. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. No way, mister. You have your own dream to pursue. I mean, you want to become a world-renowned knight, right? Well, sure. But you've helped me so much, I feel like I need to return the favor. Besides, you're a citizen of Fargus, and it's a knight's job to help the people. I love how focused you are on that dream. It's almost silly, because you're already the greatest knight I know. Okay, I'm off to borrow some books from the capital. But maybe I'll ask for your help after that. Oh, and if we ever get the chance, I'd love to visit Garrick Mock's library. Uh, if you wouldn't mind going with me, that is. <laughs> you can count on me. Thanks. Just you watch, Ash. I'll be a real professor before you know it. From the slimy depths of the swamp they rise Great beasties of every shape and size They dance in a ring and... No, that's not right. Their slime they fling and... Huh? Who's there? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Are you getting in a little choir practice there? Oh, it's you, Sylvain. Were you listening that whole time? Pretty much. I must say, that song's super creep. Uh, I mean, creative. You're the only person I know who could think of something like that. I feel like you were about to use another word there. <laughs> nope. Great song. Top notch. Uh, A plus. Are you going to perform it soon? I was actually gonna sing it for everyone later tonight. I came up with the lyrics and tune myself, and now that I'm finished, I can perform it loud and proud. And it's a song about swamp beasties. Did I hear that part right? And what's wrong with swamp beasties? Nothing in particular. It's just that if you're gonna sing it in front of everyone, maybe it should be, I don't know, relatable? I mean, swamp beasties are so... Beastie. Ugh. Wouldn't it be better with a puppy or a baby sheep or something cute like that? Hmm, I see what you're saying. Cute animals, cute animals. Oh, what about bears? Huge ones! Yeah, I guess huge bears are better than beasties. I mean, they are pretty cute when they're not trying to tear your face off. Okay, that's good. Except, I'm pretty sure bears don't live in swamps. So, if you switch it up, it should probably be about giant bears dancing in the woods. <laughs> that is the most adorable thing I've ever heard! Are you secretly a professional songwriter, Sylvain? Absolutely not. In fact, I feel like I should apologize for butting in with ideas, when you've clearly been working so hard on this. Oh, don't apologize. If it helps make it a song everyone will enjoy, I'm all for it. I'm glad we're close enough for you to give your honest opinion. Well, I've never been one to ignore hardworking girls like you. And I'd love to hear it when it's finished. Wait, what's with the look? Did you come up with the new lyrics already? Yep. 
Your suggestions gave me all the inspiration I needed. <laughs> Impressive. Uh, why don't you sing it for me? Of course. I'm sure you'll love it. From the forest they appear, a sleuth of bears with cute round ears. They dance in a ring and enjoy the beats, but tonight they'll feast on needy treats. That actually might be more creepy somehow. But hey, maybe writing weird songs is a talent all of its own. At the very least, they're great at distracting me from real life worries. <laughs> Thanks, Annette. What are you doing up so late, Mercy? I was having trouble sleeping. You too, Annie? Yup. I'm just so nervous about our battle tomorrow. Perhaps we should chat for a while to ease our nerves. That's a great idea. It reminds me of when we were students at the School of Sorcery in Ferdiad. When we shared a room and would stay up chattering until dawn? Exactly. It feels like that was forever ago. So much has happened in the meantime. We enrolled in the Officer's Academy, the war began... But we've stuck together through it all, even after classes were suspended. Of course, I'm so clumsy I felt like I was always getting in people's way while we were there. I couldn't have gotten through all this without you by my side. And I've relied on you just as much. In fact, it often feels like you're the one who's constantly coming to my aid lately. Remember when I got stuck in that bandit's trap? I thought I was done for, but you came to my rescue. Well, I wasn't gonna leave you in a bandit trap. Although, I just ended up falling right in and getting wounded myself. I was so desperate to save you, I wasn't paying attention to what was around me. If not for you healing me, I don't know what would have happened. Well, we worked together and made it back in one piece, so all's well that ends well. <laughs> you know, I think we've always been like this. I feel like I can overcome anything so long as I'm with you. And I feel the same. I hope we will be friends forever. Oh, for sure! We'll be best friends until we're a couple of wrinkled old grannies. There are so many things I want to do with you, and so many places I want to go. I don't care if we're strolling through Deirdre or just window shopping. Everything's better with you. I would love to go shopping in the capital, and then later... Say, Annie? Why don't we wait to talk about this until the war is over? What? Why? Because then we can each write down things we want to do as we think of them, and then show our list to each other afterward. Doesn't that sound fun? That sounds very fun. We can even compete to see who has the longest list. I'm gonna scribble all my plans down as soon as I get back to my room so I don't forget. But won't that keep you up longer? Oh, right. My insomnia. You were so busy chatting, I forgot all about it. Thanks, Mercy. I feel a lot better now. My sentiments exactly. Good night, Annie. I'll see you tomorrow. We're fine. Everything's fine here. Just gonna grab it and run right back out. Good evening, Annette. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, Ingrid. It's just you. Sorry about that. Guess I'm a little jumpy right now. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. But if I may... What are you doing out here so late at night? I forgot my book in the mess hall and came back to grab it. What a coincidence. I was also headed to the mess hall to look for something. Oh, yay! Then we can go together. 
seriously, I'd feel so much better if you were with me. Not entirely sure why that's the case, but okay. Oh gosh, it's so dark. Ah! What was that? I think it came from the grass over there. Hmm? Probably just another night owl. I wonder if it's... Annette, stop! You're going to run into that pile of... Ow! Who put these crates here? Crates... Oh, Annette... Well, that was quite the ordeal, but we finally made it. Thanks, Ingrid. I'm glad nobody got hurt, aside from you in those crates. But if I may, Annette, are you afraid of the dark? Uh, yeah, actually. I've been afraid of it my whole life. I give anything not to be, but I just can't seem to shake it. What about you, Ingrid? Aren't you scared? I mean, a ghost could pop out of anywhere and ghost you. The dark does not really bother me, no. And as I have never seen a ghost, I'm not afraid of them. But doesn't it scare you to think about it? I mean, just imagine some icky dead person rising from the earth and coming at you with big, chattery teeth. Certainly, we had such stories back home in Galatea. My brothers loved to tell them when I was a child. But if they were true, we would not be able to walk to breakfast without bumping into a horde of the dead. Huh. Yeah, I suppose that's true. But it's still hard to get the idea out of my head. I personally think it would be wonderful if the dead became ghosts and we could see them again. But when people die, that's it. We can't see or speak to them ever again. Yeah. When someone dies, they're gone forever. But that's all the more reason to treasure what little time we get, right? Agreed. We have only one life to live, after all. In that case, I'm gonna walk back all by myself. Are you sure? We went through quite the struggle just to make it here. If I want to conquer my fears, I'd better do it while I'm alive. The dark is still pretty terrifying, but I'm going to push through it. <laughs> I could learn a thing or two from her optimism. We only live once. Hmm. Ah, Annette! Good day to you! I see you remain as sprightly and sweet as a newly bloomed flower. Hi, Lawrence. Uh, oh my. Have I done something to invite your displeasure? You just kind of brought back a bad memory from a long time ago. Back at the School of Sorcery, there was this one time this noble guy made fun of me. What manner of cur would dare do such a thing? If a noble ever presumes to mock your genius, Point me in their direction, so I might give them a taste of their own medicine. Well, then pop the cork on that medicine bottle and take a nice big gulp. Hold a moment. Are you implying that I am the one who mocked you? I'm not implying it. I'm saying it. You made fun of me the first time we ever met. You were all like, I say, you there, this is no place for a child. Now run along to your parents before I summon the watch. We simply cannot abide a common scullery maid wandering these hallowed halls. Why, we'd be made a laughing stock. You thought I was some lost kid, and you called me a scullery maid. Yes, I do seem to vaguely recall the incident. Oh, so that scullery maid was you. Uh, that is, you were in fact no maid at all, but the noble niece of Baron Dominic. You have my sincerest apologies for the error. Pray forgive my impertinent tongue. Oh, it's fine. I mean, 
It would be silly to keep hanging on to a grudge like that, right? If we'd had but another chance to properly converse back then, I'm certain the matter would have been cleared up with some ease. But sadly, that day was both our first and last opportunity to meet. Now that you mention it, I don't remember seeing you around after that. Yes, because my father swiftly summoned me back to Alliance territory. After the King's death, the Kingdom had become too unstable for me to remain there any longer. Oh, right. That was right around the tragedy of Dusker. My father worried that relations between the Kingdom and Alliance might become strained. As such, I was forced to leave school mere days after my arrival. Huh. Kind of funny how we keep ending up together like this. Yes, it seems fate strives to keep us together, whether at the School of Sorcery, the Academy, or here. And I, for one, look forward to seeing what the future holds. Me too. But if you ever call me a kid or a maid again, no amount of summoning the watch is gonna save you. I swear on my life, those words shall never cross my lips again. And by way of apology for my odious blunder, I hereby swear to come to your aid if ever you require it. Just say the word, and I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, will hurry to your side. Annette, good day to you. Hey, Lawrence. Did you need something? Yes, there is something I simply had to tell you. Please don't say you want to ask me out. Perish the thought. I merely wanted to praise you for your diligence, as it has clearly been paying off. Uh, thanks, I guess. What's all this about? I have borne witness to your magnificent exploits, both on and off the battlefield. Such achievements could only be possible through tireless effort. That kind of brilliance is impressive, no matter if you're a noble or a common lass of the lowest birth. Is something the matter? You look like a pigeon that's just been struck in the face with wind magic. It just came out of the blue is all. I wasn't really expecting you to... compliment me. Oh, but I am wounded. Is receiving a compliment from me truly so shocking? I merely wanted to express my heartfelt admiration. Not least of all because of the misunderstanding which has long stood between us. I thought it best to speak my mind before fate's fickle hand separates us yet again. odd sometimes and now you laugh at me might I inquire as to why I see nothing odd about praising a dear colleague sorry I'm sorry it just hit me that you're actually totally sincere about all this had that not been apparent how could I be anything less than sincere in my desire to mend our previously strained relationship well, I'm glad you appreciate all of my efforts, Lawrence. I really am. Because when you called me a child back then, it felt like you were dismissing all the hard work it took to make it into the school of sorcery. I think some part of me has wanted to win your approval ever since. So it feels great to finally have it happen. You're a better judge of character than I gave you credit for, Lawrence. Naturally. It is a noble's sacred duty to stand above others and correctly evaluate their worth, after all. Well then, as something of a noble myself, I guess I could stand to learn more about that from you. That would be splendid! Well then, from one noble to another, perhaps you might join me for a meal so we might discuss issues of... Let's not. I wouldn't want to spoil my newfound appreciation for you. 
Is that so? How unfortunate. Uh, perhaps some other... Whoa, look at the time. I better get going. I need to do something with all this extra motivation. <sighs> well, no matter. I need only follow her example and work tirelessly toward my goal. For I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, must aspire to nothing less. <sighs> Am I actually a good knight? I feel like I'm hindering more than helping most of the time. What's wrong, Ignatz? You look sad. Oh, hey, Annette. Sorry to make you worry. I was just pondering some things. You don't need to worry about... Huh. Say, you're Gustav's daughter, right? Yes? Uh, why exactly? Well, Gustav is said to be one of the finest knights in all of Fargus. So... Listen, do you have a minute to talk? Of course. What's on your mind? I've been thinking about something recently. I... I don't know if I'm any use as a knight. What? Come on, Ignatz. You help us out plenty. Everyone relies on you. Do you, though? I mean, I'm a knight, but I don't have any particular skill where I'm outstanding. That's, um, why I was hoping I could learn a thing or two from stories about your father. Gustav is a legendary knight who served generations of Fargus kings, after all. Okay, this is making me blush, and I'm not even the subject of the flattery. But hey, I'm happy to tell you what I know. Oh, thank you. In that case, let me dive right in. So, um, what sort of training does he normally do? He doesn't go a day without training with both the sword and spear. And I'm serious, I don't think he's taken a day off in decades. Interesting. So, he must have been made a royal knight in recognition for all his hard work, right? I'm not sure if it's from hard work exactly. Okay, so this might just be one of my uncle's jokes, but my father started working as a soldier at the royal castle when he was even younger than we are now. And 40 or so years ago, apparently he saw the previous king, who was just a kid at the time, fall off one of the ramparts. So he threw his spear and pinned the young king's clothes to the wall, which saved his life. Anyway, that's apparently what got him promoted. That's, um... Well, it's so specific that I can't entirely dismiss it as a joke. After that, my father changed his training regimen to include spearing falling leaves onto tree trunks. Hundreds of them, every day, I'm told. He does all that just for training? I don't think I could pin one leaf, not to mention hundreds. Sorry, Annette. I think I've set my sights too high. Sorry about earlier, Ignatz. I wasn't much help at all. No, it's fine. You actually did a lot. If anything, your stories of Gustav just helped to confirm what I was thinking. That you're not cut out to be a knight? Is that what you were going to say? <laughs> exactly. You're pretty sharp, Annette. Well, since I'm the one that brought on this misunderstanding, I'd better clear it up. What misunderstanding? Look, my father is clearly an incredible knight, and everyone knows it. But if everyone was a knight just like him, we'd still end up losing every war we fought. Don't let looks fool you. He's sloppy when it comes to taking care of himself. Also, he can be stubborn as a mule, and he's a complete worrywart to boot. But he's maybe the best fighter in the land, and isn't that what a knight's job entails? Not necessarily. The thing is, there are all kinds of different people who report to my father. 
and most are excellent fighters, sure. But then there are others who can barely even ride a horse. Yet my father relies on them all the same. But how can he rely on a knight who can't fight? Because they have other skills. For example, a handful of his reports know absolutely everything about cooking and ingredients. Imagine they're under attack and rations are running low. Those people tell the others what ingredients to gather and use them to make food, which allows everyone to fight another day. Which is how they gain his trust. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, and it's a commanding officer's job to know what those are and give orders accordingly. And sure, all of this comes secondhand from my father, but I also know it's true. So, I don't think there's any reason for you to be so pessimistic. Charging directly into the gut of the enemy's main force isn't the only way for a knight to be useful. So, you really think I'm still helping in some way? Absolutely. Maybe it's your skill in painting, or your knowledge about works of art, or how carefully you always look at your surroundings. You have a lot of strengths, and it would be a real pity to bury them all under an avalanche of, I'm not cut out for this kind of thing. You know what? You're right. There are all kinds of different people in our army. And in that case, I think I'll keep trying to be a better knight. I'm so glad to hear that. This was really weighing on me, so I couldn't just let it go. And hey, you know how I always make a mess of things the second I lose my focus? Well, I used to get really worried about that for the same reason as you. I thought I was holding everyone back. Really? But you help us all the time, Annette. I mean, if not for you cheering me up, I probably would have resigned from my knighthood. Oh, that makes me so happy, Ignaz. I'm really glad I could help. I know we both have our own sets of worries to deal with, but we'll just keep working hard together. And I know I can work harder if I'm with you. in the previous battle, Annette. Oh, stop. You're gonna make me blush. It's an honor to be complimented by one of the School of Sorcery's most legendary alumni. I'm legendary now, am I? Well, I can't say I disagree. <laughs> I heard so many stories about you, though I don't know how true any of them are. Like... There's one where you turned a bunch of bossy noble kids into horses, apparently? Oh, yes! I remember that spell. I titled it, Wherefore Winnies. <laughs> I was so overjoyed at having completed it that I began using it everywhere, and thus a tiny misunderstanding was born. <laughs> I also heard you were smart enough to argue magical theory with the teachers and win. Ugh, arguing is such a gauche way to put it. But these stories offer only a glimpse into who I am. Such trifling incidents are hardly worthy of the word legendary. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like at least some of them actually happened, right? I never dreamed I'd be fighting beside as big a legend as you. It honestly makes me kind of nervous. No need for such modesty. After all, you yourself are among the most talented women in all the kingdom. Oh gosh, that's high praise. Did a teacher say it, maybe? No, I merely happened to read that book you wrote during your time there. Book? Oh, but no, 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 no. I mean, I'm not even sure I'd call that a book, so... Really, it was more like a collection of memos on how to make Mercy treats. Making magical morsels! <laughs> exactly! That book spoke to my very soul. 
the thought of using magic to simplify complicated cooking tasks was nothing short of revolutionary. Okay, but how did you get your hands on it? It was supposed to be private. I mean, I did give a teacher permission to present one of the spells, but... Combining ice and wind magic to make the outside soft while the inside stays crunchy? Oh, remarkable! It created a radical new movement of desserts that were softer, sweeter, and more divine than any which had come before. If you aren't proud of that, you can't be proud of anything. Though it is unfortunate the treats cannot be made without the use of the school's facilities. Well, it's not that I'm not proud, but it's also not like I wrote it all by myself either. I mean, sure, the magic was me, but Mercy is the one who taught me how to bake in the first place. Ah, Mercedes, I am well aware that her little delicacies are the finest in all Fodlin. Like those ones with pockets of sweet and butter mixed into the dough? I would kill for one of those right now. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. Is it a new creation? I must ask her to make it for me. <laughs> Ahem. In any case, I look forward to getting to know you better, Annette. I anticipate many lively theoretical discussions ahead. Are you free at the moment, Annette? I was wondering if you might help me with something. I sure am. What's up? Well, I wish to conduct an experiment outside today, though naturally I'm a touch hesitant about it. Because your mood changes outside, right? Exactly. And though I'm deeply reluctant to experience that, one cannot make an omelet without throwing a few eggs against the wall. Well, I think you're a genius regardless, so I'm happy to help. No time like the present, right? Let's do this. Oh, uh, please stop pulling me along. I haven't even told you what the experiment is yet. Oh dear. Oh dear. Are, are you certain you want to do this, Annette? I sincerely doubt any magic built upon my crude ideas could ever work. Oh, it'll be fine. Let's get started. Well, if you insist, I suppose we must begin this foolish experiment. Hey, I forgot to ask. What is the experiment anyway? Oh, just a completely useless spell meant to gather cats from the surrounding area. Oh gosh, cute! What are you waiting for? Let's get started! Hmm, the spell seemed to go off all right, but nothing happened. <sighs> I knew it. I'm an utter failure. My research paper should be gathered up and used to wipe mud from the hooves of swine. Perhaps this is fate's way of telling me magic is beyond my comprehension, and I was a fool to ever try. Look, moping about it won't help anything. So let's both take a deep breath and figure out what went wrong. Okay, I've got an idea. If we take the flower catalyst and use wind magic to spread the fragrance... Oh look, it attracts insects. Quick. Grab that cockroach before it scurries away. It's clearly a finer sorceress than I. Ew, gross! But yeah, that didn't work at all. Hmm, maybe if we use this mineral instead? Goodness, the reflective light has attracted the attention of birds. And they're really mad for some reason. Run, Constance, run!
Whew! I had intended that to be a brief exercise, but it proved to be quite the ordeal. Sorry that all my tinkering just made things worse. But hey, I did notice one thing. When those insects and birds showed up, there sure were a lot of them. True! Each attempt did seem to attract a single type of creature in unnaturally vast numbers. Does that indicate that the spell can indeed effectively summon a swarm of one specific species? It would certainly explain why the flower attracted so many bugs. Ugh. And why the light of the mineral called down such a huge flock of birds. <laughs> why this is a magnificent discovery! I feel we're on the cusp of breaking new ground! Maybe it didn't go as planned. But I guess this turned out to be a pretty big success, huh? There's no time to waste, Annette! We must investigate the cause of this phenomenon at once! <laughs> yeah! I bet you'll create something revolutionary!